hundred percent. Look at uh, we want to want to go through the end of, end of year um, snippets here in terms of um, player of the year, best game of the year, memorable memorable moment of the year, biggest disappointment, and team to watch for twenty twenty four. So we start. Interesting, good, good way to start it now. Since we're on about the main man himself, player of the year. Would you would you have anyone outside of David Clifford in that in that conversation? Well, you know who my favorite is this this season, and I've said it from day <laughs> one. You wouldn't listen. You wouldn't listen to me. You, you wouldn't listen to me. And Shane, Shane McGregor. Shane McGregor. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. And I'll tell you right. Hear me out. Hear, hear me out on this. Right. Hear me out on this. Right. Hear me out on this. Right. I'm not saying Shane McGuigan should get Player of the Year, but Shane McGuigan has to be close. Right. And I'll tell you why. To win an Ulster title, to win an Ulster title, <coughs> in my opinion. Is, is a lot harder is a lot harder to win any other provincial right but to, to win back to back Ulster titles now also on top of that in Division 2 this year I seen Derry playing three times a lot of people wouldn't see those from it so are we based in Football of the Year and this is something that really sort of irks me a little bit Football of the Year is from January 2023 to the end of the All-Ireland Series right the no, National no, League it's not. no it's not no it's not I know it's not I know it's not I know it's not but the point I'm making is it fucking should be you know, because how can you judge football of the year when Kerry put 20 points past Clare and 20 points past Tipperary and in an all Ireland semi-final? How can you judge that in comparison to Shane McGuigan, who's had to play against Monaghan and Tyrone and Armagh, you know, and play real, real fucking high crunch games? So for me, I think, honestly, genuinely think, and uh, the National League from January right through to, to July should be in consideration for when you're talking about football of the year. It's like anything. It's over the course of a season. It shouldn't be over the course of five or six games. And the other thing that shouldn't be taken into consideration as well, well, you have to give it to someone who got to the final. That shouldn't be the case either. You know, that shouldn't be the case either. But for me, from an influence point of view, I think David Clifford has got an unbelievable influence on Kerry. I think he, I think he has a similar influence to Kerry on what Shane McGuigan has to Derry. I think, you know, when you take both those players out of the team, you know, they're, they're, there's a huge, huge uh, uh, gulf in their side. But I do think that McGuigan should be talked about in the same regard. I've seen him produce a performance in RD against Louth, who had played a packed defence in a tight field with zero space. And Louth were a big physical side on a heavy pitch. And some of the scores in it that that man took that day were unbelievable. But you wouldn't have seen them because there are no TV cameras there. Do you know what I mean? No, are, you, you know, are you? Are you? Are you? Are you going? Are you going? Put, uh, just, I'll, I'll nail your colours to the mass here now. Are you going putting Shane McGregor in the same same category as as Clifford? This year, this year, based on the influence that he's had and the year that he's had, he has to be up there. He has to be up there. You know, he has to be. He has to be. You know, will will, will they go with kind of a nostalgic um, view here in terms of uh, James McCarthy, nine of Ireland's uh, <laughs> first? The chances, the chances are that it'll probably happen, right? And I, I know my father used to say to me, "There's no room for sentiment in sport." Like you know, he used to this saying, "There's no room for sentiment in sport." But unfortunately, you know, the, the it, it's well, hard to know. Like, even, even even if we even if we take right, even if we take the last three games, usually it's the quarter. You know, you know how know this shit goes. Yeah, quarterfinal, semi final. I, I thought James McCarthy and Sunday had a very very below average game, like very below yeah, no, average I, game. I, I did, I did too, I did too. So, so I'm kind of, I'm kind of wondering, I'm kind of wondering. Kind of thinking back to the Monaghan game. Monaghan game, he was solid. He had a decent game. Uh, the quarterfinal then against Mayo, he was de- like. It, but to me, this is just this is just pure sentiment. Sentiment. James McCarthy has been a Rolls Royce of a footballer for Dublin. A Rolls oh. Royce of a footballer, and but this, you know this he's been reward, this reward for fifteen years. But yeah. the point I make, the point I would ask, or the question that I would ask is, has has Pascal? And Costello and Mannion have they not had as much of an impact on Dublin winning the All Ireland this year than James McCarthy? You know they have it equally as, as good an impact. You know, but for me, you've got to look at what what a, an individual has done, the performances he's put in on a consistent basis. Like I, I don't know. Like I, I just like <laughs> if you go back to the first round of the All Ireland. Apparently, you always go back to Ulster. You always go back to Ulster. I don't, I don't, the reason, the reason for me is. The reason I do is because the high level of competitive nature of the games and, and, and it's the high level of the competitive nature of the games and how difficult it is to win back-to-back Ulster titles. Like, you so, know? 
All right, but even from a, a Dublin perspective here, CD, who who do you think like who who is the standout Dublin player this year? Because Khan Khan for his high standards had a, probably a blow to low well, Khan, Khan probably wasn't at the, at the highest level, but Khan, uh, l- listen, you know Conor Costello has had a brilliant Costello, season, a brilliant season in the final. Yeah. Yeah, the final. I, I think he's come a long way. He's had a brilliant season. Pascal is in a brilliant season. Really good season. Mannion in a brilliant final. Uh, you know, Mick Fitz is obviously showing a level of consistency uh, you know, across across the year as well. Cluxton. <laughs> Cluxton's been brilliant, you know, since he's come back, hasn't conceded a goal, his kickouts are unblemished. He's kicking a couple of frees again. <laughs> you know, he, he's he, he's in a brilliant he's in a brilliant championship too. <laughs> but I, I think the McCarthy one it's mad too the narrative, like you know, because what you'll find out is you'll find a real push in the media for yeah. McCarthy to declare the year now, you know, and the Sunday game have named him, and you know, and, and listen, look, James did McCarthy the Sunday, is a I, I, player. Did the, the Sunday game named him as player of the year today? Yeah, yeah, or he named them as player of the year. No, they're player of the year, you know, in the team yeah, of the yeah. year or whatever. Oh, I know that. Yeah, 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 of course, yeah, yeah. Look, look, Jeez, listen, and he's, he's 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 a he's an absolute road race of a player, McCarthy. Like, and he, you know, when he first started playing, obviously, you know, he was playing a real powerhouse <laughs> wing half back position. He played at six, he's played at seven, he's played at eight, he's played at nine, and been a yeah. real driving for Dublin over I, the last over the last I, twelve, thirteen. Look, he probably, probably should have got player of the year. Uh, one of the years they won the Ireland. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But in terms yeah. of this, the, for to me, this this hasn't been a standout year for him in terms of the performances on the pitch. He's been he's been solid, like he's been really really good, like. But in terms of player of the year, I personally I I still give it to Clifford. I still you know I this year I, I just think he's been absolutely outrageous. Um, you know, obviously the final probably for his he was still still had a, let's not kid ourselves here. Clifford still had a, a good final. Right, a decent final, uh, yeah. but it's just people have his the standards are just through the roof here. So, uh, you're you're yeah. going with McGregor, so yeah. No, I I would I would I would have, I'd be between Clifford and the Wigan for me. It'd be a yeah. it'd be a coin talk between the two of them, and probably the fact that Clifford probably, you know, ended up in the final. Would probably just edge it for him, but for me, Shane McGuigan is. Uh, the, I'm not making an argument for Shane McGuigan to win it. I'm an argument for the fact she should be considered up there with those boys. 100. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah, absolutely. Best game of the year. Ulster final, hands down, by a mile, by a mile. But sure, what other uh, game? What other game? What other? You can't I, name I, the, you know, I can't, the all Ireland semi final. I tell you what, Kerry, New, Kerry, York, Kerry, Kerry, Kerry. Huh? New York and Leitrim was obviously a brilliant game for for the excitement and going to extra time and. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's hard to believe that's show. the night the championship. It's hard to believe that's the night the championship started. It only feels like yesterday, but that was a brilliant game. There's been some brilliant games, but I, I just I was just so engrossed. The fact that a, that a final went to penalties for the first time ever, I thought yeah. just it just did everything, you know. And 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 the other thing to remember as well, I know I'll get bothered by the by the anti naughty brigade here, like, but you know, for for me, <laughs> Clo- it's got a it's got a wonderful it's a wonderful amphitheater. It was a packed house in Clonus. You know, it, it was just, I just felt it had everything. And then you had the whole build up of the whole Gallagher situation and the lead up to the final. And there was just so much right on it. McGeady looking for that first trophy as our man manager. I just felt it was just such a fucking build up to that Ulster final. And I really enjoyed it. I just thought it was intriguing. It was enthralling. It had a bit of everything. It had black cards, red cards, it had penalties. And it disallowed goals, and it had a mark at the end for Rory Grugan to try and win the game. You know, Armagh were involved in some great games. Armagh against Galway ah, was yeah. a great game. Savage. In, the, yeah, in, yeah. In, the, in the group stages, and a couple of the group stages were quite exciting towards the end. But I think from a, if you're looking at it, Andy, you probably look at the four major finals. You look at the All Ireland semi finals, and it, it, and the final itself, and that probably was the most exciting game for me. You know, might, might yeah. not have been the best quality, might not have been the best quality, but for me, it was certainly the most exciting game. Yeah, yeah, no, that's look at Jones' experience. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, Kerry and Derry, like, the, the final itself, people said, look at the final itself in terms of quality, the day itself probably wasn't. Um, no, you know, it was me talking about the Fender's yeah. Day, you know, the yeah, it was, day. it was, it was 100%. Kerry and Derry was a brilliant game, brilliant game, huh? Kerry and Derry was a brilliant oh, game, it was, brilliant. yeah, yeah, that would be the one, that would be the game I'd be picking to guys, which is the in terms yeah. of um, the last. Five to us, and the quality was 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 decent as well. So, uh, me- memorable moment of the year. Jesus, memorable moment of the year. Probably. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with um, 
the kind of Conor McManus um, versus our man Dublin, just the romance of a 35 year old coming back and kicking the lights mm. out. It was that yeah. for a man of his age. Probably the shot. Probably the, I don't know if it's memorable or more shocking is is that when we found out Cluxon was back in the Dublin team, it was like wow, you know, it was like that was one that we sort of lanced the final Stephen Cluxon and and like it was the first we had heard of it, and we were all like, what is going on, you know? And there was talk of desperation and this and that, but there was obviously a Desi master plan behind the scenes. But that was definitely a memorable moment. Um, I think New York winning their first ever, yeah. you know, game has to be probably up there. The scenes in the dressing rooms, and we obviously had. Mickey Cunningham on and we had Shane Carthy on as well so yeah for me that probably New York would probably be mine you know um, the biggest biggest disappointment your mates my, your old mates my, my old mates <laughs> <laughs> well I think I think for, for something that started with such momentum <laughs> and just ended so flat ended for them it just ended yeah. so flat for them um, you know, I know it's probably harder for you to speak about it. It's easier for me because I'm not from the county. But I was so disappointed with Mayo by and and how they just you were hyping just, them. You were hyping them up all year. You were hyping them up all uh, year. I shouldn't, have, I shouldn't have, but I was only winding you up for fuck's sake. But it was like really, <laughs> but the air came out of the balloon so quickly, and the air came out of the balloon so quickly, and it was just. You know, it, 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 it was disappointing. After such a really, really positive league campaign, then the performance, I thought end of the turning point was maybe the... I, I don't know, did they, get the, did they get a wee bit ahead of themselves after the bit Kerry and Killarney? And, like, their, their performance against Louth, their performance against Louth in... Uh, in Castle Park. It, it stank, like. It really did, like. Yeah, you know, they, they lost it, that, their season... It was the 17 minutes against Cork, Stevie. They were six points up. If they bet Cork that, that day, Kerry and Dublin would have been playing in the quarterfinal. Yeah. So that's that's your season there. Yeah. Now, I don't I still don't think I still don't think they would have won the Ireland. But um yeah. but yeah, it, it would have been it would have it would have shaped up into a different season in terms of the rest they would have gotten three weeks uh, in a row with Galway and then who was it? Galway, Galway. Probably are another team that pro- probably disappointed a little bit too, Andy, to be honest, you know. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're, yeah. yeah. Well, because after the three... the, the, some big wins, the, some big wins in the National League, that there was a huge psychological one where they won the athletic rounds, you know, and yeah. the emotion from, uh, you know, really and, and Joyce, it was nearly like we've come, to, we've come to the north, we've come into a hostile atmosphere, we've come out of here with a win, you know, and it was really hard, but I, I think the miles in the clock this year for Shane Mulch, I think Shane's, Shane's club campaign definitely had an impact on him this year. Oh, like he played right up until the All Ireland final last year, and uh, at the massive high of the All Ireland final, was straight into Kill McCoddy. The whole baggage of transfer with Kill McCoddy yeah. stuff was a bit of an impact on a lad. He carried them. He probably carried them through the Leinster Championship. To be honest with you, you know, and he was he was a big big reason why Kill McCoddy won the All Ireland this year. And I think you know the fact that he had played with such longevity and didn't get a break, didn't get a pre season. Came back in and and Galway needed him and then he was injured. He was injured playing against uh, Mayo. Injured. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, look, and, and three kind of teams versus Common Mayo, Galway all finished in the top three, Division One, and they, the three of them would be would I be think, disappointed. I, I think personally, Davy. I think Davy's had a good good enough year, and I'm not just saying that because Davy, you know, has been in the show and stuff like that. I'm not, but but I'm I'm looking at. at I've worked with those lads. I've worked with Roscommon, and I know they're mad. They're mad to break that glass ceiling of an All Ireland semi final, right? It's a long, long time since they've been there, and they, and and you've got. I think you've got a you, you've got to walk before you can run. And and last year in Division One will help them. Now what they of need course. to do, is they need to back it up next year now, and maybe taper and tailor their training that they're coming in Division One, do enough to stay in one again, and then really, really drive to try and get into that sort of you know last eight. And, and have one big performance to get the All Ireland semi final because I think for me, for a team like Roscommon, that that probably would be the glass ceiling. You know, the, the All Ireland semi final. Like I don't, I don't think they're good enough to, to get to a final. Uh, I don't think they've got the strength and depth to get to a final. But but certainly they could get to a semi final. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big time. And the, the last question, see here, team to watch for twenty twenty four. Jesus, just over. Jesus, wow. team to watch for twenty twenty four. Well. <sighs> Uh, so obvious, obvious ones, obviously Jerry, uh, Jerry Kerry. Well, lower on, like, lower, lower down the lower down the divisions. Uh, you know, there's been a couple of sort of brighter brighter lights for the likes of Antrim, for example. You know, who have had a decent season. Uh, you know, I, I I wasn't sure if if Andy would have enjoyed his 
coming from the country to the city, but he, he's done really well. Um, you know, they, they've 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 had some big big performances. Got the got the Talson semi final as well. I'm going to tell you a team to watch for next year, and you, you might be you might think I'm actually winding you up here. Meath could be a team to watch for next year if if they can build on what they did because they shocked me in the Talson final because they had a system, they had a system, and they played to a game plan. And hats off, credit where credit's due. Pollum swallowed his pride and decided I mean, not winning fuck all until I set up a system of play here and they've got some good players that Conor Gray in the middle of the field is a really good player they've got some fine forwards their full forward line is very very impressive yeah. uh, John Morris and you know Aaron Lynch and those boys very impressive so they'll be interested to see next year you, you won't be fair you, well look at it I, personally I think this will be the last or Ireland double win, win in, a, in a while to be honest with you it, now it all depends in terms of yeah I think so I think so yeah I really do because I think um, people at the game were kind of saying it was just a sense of you know this is this is kind of it in terms of the, the last final the, the last the last yeah the kind of last hooray is right so mm. yeah look at Sylvia you look at the, the the three boys that left you look at their squad now you're going into you know after 17, 18 players last Sunday. You're getting into, you know, the unknown here. Like previous, like six, seven years ago, Dublin, you could go down to seven, eight, eight into the squad and you're still replacing like for like. And if, again, if the likes of the three boys, the nine, nine or nine winners, uh, Fitzy, Cluxton and James McCarthy uh, go this year, like that's three, three massive culture kind of builders uh, leaving your squad here. And like you're replacing, look at the, the people that came on the last day, they're obviously young, but... Geez, you're you're replacing absolute legends with with youngsters that that are finding their way in the game. So it's it's going to be, you know, whoever look at even Desi said after he had an interview on an off the ball and he was like, um, the Joe Gilroy asked the question and he, he even yeah. he even kind of said, look at I, you know, I'm I'm having I have a, cu- a cup of coffee here now and that's all I'm concentrating on. But we we'll see we we'll see what the other players, uh, you know, some players are going to be asking the same questions, huh? Even on the bench, even in the bench, and there's like Dean Rock, obviously, you know, is is, is coming coming he's towards gone. the end. He's gone. He's like, like gone. Craig, Craig, da- like Craig Das. Craig's a good age as well. Like you know, Craig Das is on the bench he's for the 30, Monaghan game. He's thirty-one. He's thirty-one. Like, like you're looking at Sean McMahon came on as sub. Uh, the Tom Lehef has been around a while. Keen Murphy came on as sub. You know that they're not they're not probably of of brilliant footballers. Don't get me wrong, but they're not probably of the same caliber as you know your McCarthy's, your McFitzes. You know, and even even Evan Comerford there hasn't played a lot of football in recent years. You know, so he's the the goat of all well, goats when it comes to being the, playing in that. The, the reason the reason I'm bringing that up, Stevie, is because your your thing with Mead, like Mead, could if Dublin Dublin will come back into the pack here. It is inevitable that some of them players will go now. So like, there's a big opportunity. Look, I still think Dublin would probably be good enough to win Leinster, but it'll be interesting now next year or two to see where where this is going to go for them. So look, mm. we'll uh, we'll wait and see. All right. Yeah. This is and this is a pleasure. It. Pleasure, it's been a Yeah, yeah. Good, good, good season. I have to say, good season. I've, All right. I've, I've right. enjoyed it. I've, I've enjoyed it. Maybe, hopefully, maybe, you know, we 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 maybe look at the at the fixture calendar maybe next year and. I just think a few wee subtle changes here and there now would definitely would definitely make a difference to the to the season, you know. And and I'd love to see our leagues. I'd love to see our national leagues get more of a more of a real proper standing, you know, because I think they're the best competition we have. You know, there's four divisions, and realistically, let's be honest, in Gaelic football at the present moment, time there probably is four levels. You know, that's that's the reality. You know.